The easiest thing I've done was to get out from under the labels and to live. that will outlive us, the work that you're doing. There are people that you will never meet whose lives that you've transformed, that you, you're living a life that will outlive you. Oliver Wendell Holmes said that once a man or woman's mind has been expanded with an idea, concept, or experience, it can never be satisfied to going back to where it was. And so their lives will be transformed and they will become a, a pencil, as Mother Teresa would say, in the hand of God and start writing a new chapter with their lives. So how do people get hungry? You get hungry by finding something that's you. I believe that all of us are born unique, but most of us die copies. You got to find out what is it that turns you on, what resonates with you. This is my passion. This is my drive. This is something that I feel in my heart. The key to that hunger-driven life is a heart-centered life. I didn't do what I'm doing for years because of my programming, because of the culture in which I was raised in. I would see other people with, with degrees and PhDs and, and MBAs and credentials I don't have, and I convinced myself I couldn't do it. I mean, not only someone's opinion of you does, does not have to determine your reality, that you have to work on yourself and you have to have an unstoppable attitude and no excuse is acceptable and you've got to make it a, a, a priority, a non-negotiable in your life and hold a, a constant vision of what it is you want to achieve. See it accomplished and go all out. Find a way to win in spite of the setbacks, in spite of the disappointments, in spite of your failures. I, I tell people, you will fail your way to success. I have a saying is life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. <laughs>
when something happens to you, you don't deny it, you defy it. And I was defiant that I'm going to beat this, I'm going to handle this, that there are people who many times when something happens to them, that they embrace it from a place of fear and it takes them out. And Elsie Robinson said, things may happen to you and things may happen around you, but the most important things are the things that happen in you. And you have to stand up inside yourself and deal with it and handle it. Those experiences of, of going after goals that's beyond your comfort zone and having relationships that will challenge you and surrounding yourself with coaches and mentors who can take you to a place within yourself that you can't go by yourself because you can't read the label when you're locked in the box. And so those experiences, they challenge you to go to that next level and continue to move forward in your life doing new and exciting things that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you when you live a hard-centered life, deciding that you're going to live a life that will outlive you. You're going to live a life that counts, a life that will build a legacy and change the planet. To ask yourself the question, who should I count on and who should I count out? And so many people never achieve their goals because they have too many toxic, negative, energy draining people in their lives. And you have to have goals outside of your comfort zone that will challenge you because in order to do something you've never done, you've got to become someone you've never been. And you've got to have a mentor who's experienced, who, who's been there, done that. And, and as a result of that relationship, because you can't see the picture when you're in the frame. Muhammad Ali said, I'm the greatest, but he never won a championship without Angelo Dundee. And Michael Jordan never won a championship without Phil Jackson. So you've got to have someone that can see something in you that you can't see. That, that, that can take you to a place within yourself that you can't go by yourself. Between ages zero and five, we determine what's available to us and what's not available to us. There are certain things I could not do, certain places I could not go. And so now you have to operate within the constraints of, of the dominant society and the things that they have created for you. And it's a challenge to see yourself beyond that and to work to get outside of that. You unconsciously operate within the parameters of what has been put in place. That many people, because they're not making a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to think outside of what life has thrown at them, they end up doing the same thing over and over and over again. Einstein said that thinking that has brought me this far has created some problems that this thinking can't solve. And so through relationships, through reading, through studies, through goals and dreams beyond your comfort zone, it, it allows you to begin to live out of your imagination as opposed to out of your history. Talk to me about your grandkids, your great grandkids. Like if you had just an hour to spend with them, what would you give them in terms of setting them up the way that Mr. Washington set you up? Like what are those core principles that you think are most impactful? One, get to know yourself. That I, I believe that we're taught, be you not conformed to this world, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. What it means is that don't live the life that has been given you. By that, the culture, by your parents. By the circumstances by the people that's around you. That Sidney Poitier wrote a book called The Measure of a Man. And he said, when you go for a walk with someone, something happens without being spoken. He said, either you adjust to their pace or they adjust to your pace. Whose pace have you adjusted to?